This is a quick video lecture to look at the power of the command called xargs. So xargs is a command that we can use to uh, apply a given command to a series of things in order. So the best way to understand this is to kind of look at an example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the sequence command, seq. And what this does when run is it prints out numbers from 1 to 5. So let's imagine that these five items are items that we want to perform some type of operation on. So if I want to go ahead and perform a single operation on each one of these, let's say I want to add the word hello to the beginning of each one of these. So this would say hello one, and this would say hello two, and so forth. Well, we can pipe the data from the sequence command into another command called xargs. And xargs job is to execute the same uh, command on a bunch of items in order. We could achieve this same operation using a shell script and a loop, but xargs makes it pretty convenient to do these types of things uh, right on the command line. So let's kind of back into how this works. What I really want to do is, for each one of these items, I just want to say, hello, followed by the number. And what's going to happen here, let's run it and talk about it, is that xargs will run the echo command, and it will put the word hello in front of each of the items that are output by the sequence command. Although I want to note, I want to make a note that this doesn't really give us the example that we were thinking. You know, I think I had said that initially that this would do hello one, hello two, hello three, hello four, hello five. But the idea with xargs is that it's going to apply itself using a default algorithm, and it's either going to uh, apply the xargs command to each item of output based on the new line character or based on the spaces between the components. So it looks like sequence has a little bit of a uh, different way of handling uh, data when it's piped from one command to another as opposed to when it's printing to the screen. But we can fix this in xargs. You say, oh, I wanted, I didn't want this to run once for all of these items. I want it to run, uh, or uh, I want it to run one time for each item. Let's go back up here and change this. All we really need to do is tell xargs, hey, uh, you're going to get a bunch of stuff, and instead of applying your uh, command to all of the stuff that's coming at you, what I really want you to do is apply this to each single item that comes through. And now if I run it, you'll notice that xargs has enough information to go ahead and say, oh, okay, run echo hello and put that next to the number one and then so on and so forth. So n number n uh, dash n one is a way of saying, hey, break this token up, uh, this string up uh, based upon the, uh, into individual tokenized items. Uh, notice there's nothing back here after the word hello. Notice that the last parameter that's fed into xargs is always going to be the item piped through. So in this case, the assumption is that the last thing that's getting appended is the first piece of output from sequence and so on. This is not the most useful com um, thing that we could deal with in terms of using xargs, but it helps kind of clarify a little bit about how this program works. Take some input via a pipe and then apply some specific command to each one of those items. So let's go back and see how we can modify this to be a little more useful. So in the directory that I'm in, let's see what's in here. There's a bunch of files. So let's back up and let's reorganize this command. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an ls. Uh, and I'll put it in a single column format. So use ls-1. And now and what I want to do is I want to take the output of an ls command and I want to echo hello and we'll put a space. Oh, there's already a space that's going to be in there. And what we want to do is have that hello uh, command prepended to each of the files in this directory. So let's run this. And you'll notice that I get the same results as I got before. The word hello is echoed and then all of the items from the ls output. So remember this is the same issue we had before. If I add uh, dash n1 to say, hey, break this stuff up via the spaces or the new line characters. You'll notice now it runs the xargs command on each one of these items. So why is this useful? Like, why would I ever want to do this? You're saying this doesn't look like something that makes a lot of sense. Well, sometimes the, the ability to uh, look at a bunch of files, usually via the find command, and then apply a specific command to every one of those files that you find can be really helpful. So, you know, let's say somebody gets fired from your company and they say, go find all of the files owned by this user and delete them. Uh, you could run a find command and use xargs to delete those files in turn as they are found. So let's do something a little more 
useful here other than echoing these out. So if you look in this directory, there's a bunch of files. You notice they're currently all owned by my group, which is JSON. So if you notice that I am in a couple of other groups, so what I'm going to do is actually change uh, these commands over to be um, the CD, uh, or uh, change all these files to be owned by the CD-ROM command. So let's go back and start to build um, our xargs command. So I'm going to do an ls um, dash l. That's not even no, just an ls. I'm going to pipe this through xargs because I want each file that ls finds uh, to be have a specific command executed upon it. And what I'm going to do is um, we'll make sure that it's um, I'm grabbing each single item as it comes. And then what I want to do is do change group to CD-ROM. And so every file that ls kicks out, I'm going to do a change grp to CD-ROM. So let's just run it. And I get an error because I have, uh, oops, because I have uh, a link in here. But what you'll notice is xargs actually went ahead and converted all of the ownership of these files to CD-ROM. Now again, the assumption is that the last item on here, notice I don't have a file name at the end of this, right? Because what happens is xargs assumes the last argument um, is going to be uh, specifically uh, the file that it's operating on. Uh, I don't want to go too far into discussing xargs in this discussion because we're really only looking at it for basic functionality. Um, but in many cases, you'll see in xargs this dash i curly bracket curly bracket. And you can use this curly bracket curly bracket to indicate the name of the file. So in other words, the file that's generated uh, by the ls command in turn will get put into this variable, essentially. And then if you want to see that file, you can put it there. So let's, um, let's change all these back to my group. And now if we do an ls dash l and look at these, you'll notice that everything's back. So if you don't like this idea that you can't see the file that's being operated on, you can use this dash i curly bracket curly bracket um, bit of information. So pretty cool. And some other ways that we can use this aren't just in conjunction with ls, but it's pretty common that you'll use this command in conjunction um, with find. So uh, find every file named conf, oops, starting at the root directory. So what you can do is use the find command, like in this case, find all the files that um, have the string .conf in their name, and then this might find a thousand files, it might find zero files, and what this will do is pipe them through xargs, xargs will queue them up, and then one at a time it'll operate on those files and change their group uh, to be JSON. This is actually a really not useful script, but if you think about the fact that you can apply a bunch of customized options to the command, uh, the find command, and you can then execute commands on those files one at a time, this gets to be really powerful. Uh, Again, take a look at the uh, man page for xargs. xargs is also a great command to uh, Google. It's one of the more powerful commands um, in Linux. And one thing I often tell students too is if you don't really understand xargs, in a previous lecture we talked about using loops in a bash script, and you are welcome to just write a little shell script uh, that achieves the same end using a uh, loop. And so while xargs is Xargs is great for kind of like one-off items like this. You may be more comfortable writing a shell script, especially if what you do is when you find a file, you want to have multiple uh, operations occur on that file, or you just want to be really safe. Sometimes I know um, when I'm working on Linux, one-liners like this can be really convenient, but I also get a little bit leery because I like to test stuff and I like to know um, what's going on. And, and sometimes I feel like a script gives me a little bit more security, which is probably a false sense of security, but it just feels a little more... Um, definite. So that's the basics of xargs and um, you're welcome to play with this and um, see how it works and again take a look on the internet for some more details on how it works. It's a really powerful command and something that can um, make your life a lot easier.